For the better part of, of two centuries of education in the United States, uh, school is something that's largely happened to kids. And it was really progressive thinkers about education have always found something really wrong with students having this supposedly transformative moment in their life be something entirely passive. Um, and so at University League at School, we came at it with the approach of how can we make school stop happening to kids and make school start mattering to kids. I think uh, Liggett is an extraordinary place, and it's extraordinary for a lot of reasons, but I would put right at top of the list, it's the academic research program. The nice thing about ARP is that it flips the tables a little bit and it allows the student to take something that's already important to them and look at it in a lot of different ways. It's a messy process, we understand that, and that's as it should be. Um, but after that, you've got choice, and then you've got voice. Um, where do you want to take it? My biggest question is what do you like to do? Like, do you like to draw? Do you like to read? Do you like to build? Do you like to throw a football? Do you, what is it? And how are we going to combine that doing with the, the academic portion of it? And it could be anything. In ARP 9, they kind of develop those base skills. We progress through the year with, with testing their summary skills, with their analysis skills, with their synthesis skills, uh, with, with writing a thesis and defending it with evidence. In ARP 10, we really try to hone those and refine those skills. Uh, we do that by incorporating ARP into our U.S. history class. So it takes a class that already existed and then takes those ARP skills and puts them as a foundation of that class. You choose. Um, you pick a topic that's of interest to you. You're going to wrestle with that some in the end of your junior year and a little bit in the beginning of the senior year until you settle in. They write a prospectus which contains their goals and their relevance to what they want to do and their purpose. I'd say that we're good at allowing students to either follow their nose or follow the breadcrumbs. So if they're interested in a topic, as they read more about it, okay, is there a subtopic that, that really fascinates you? Oh, here's something that you mentioned that, that was really interesting to me. Have you thought about that? And when students are open and invested and curious, um, they can often navigate through maybe a topic that's too broad or a topic that doesn't feel right to the one that's right for them. All across the board, no matter who the student is, um, there's always growth there. So I think at the beginning they come in as freshmen and they maybe don't understand what ARP is really about and it's a lot of like, why do I have to learn how to do these citations? Why do I have to? It's a lot of like, why do I have to do this? Um, but then by the time they're seniors, those things just become second nature, which is really nice to see. And then they just do things that you would do as a researcher. And the whole idea is presentation, paper, product. And that product can be um, something artistic. It can be a piece of music. It could be an internship somewhere in a lab, making books, uh, installation art pieces. Uh, it really just depends on what the student wants to do. I think that the really cool thing about the ARP program is that you're really taking your own initiative to um, learn about all of the things that are really important to you. And with me, I've gone super excessive. <laughs> and so you, you do have that opportunity to go super wild with whatever you want to do, something that's really important to you. And it's not, it doesn't feel like homework or an assignment. There are so many cool projects this year. I feel like our, our class has created a lot of more uh, um, outside the box um, projects. You know, we have Hope Kolka's project who, um, she's creating a project looking at uh, feminist uh, sci-fi art. And she created this whole interactive installation. And I mean, talk about really being able to immerse someone into something and really creating more empathy like that. Uh, so her project's absolutely amazing. Probably the most you know, complex project I've seen done at this school. I think that my project definitely is like my entire soul in one piece because <laughs> when I was developing my question, I, I wanted to take everything that I care about and put it into one thing. And so I wanted to combine world politics and art and science fiction. And so I feel like every aspect of this project is something that I care about really deeply. I think the, the greatest satisfaction out of this project is just getting to tell people about it and people really saying, oh, I never thought about it like that. And so I guess creating that awareness and having those conversations are probably one of the most important parts of the project. Brooke was actually in my class where we researched together, so um, I had kind of heard about her project before and then when I said I was doing the lab, she was like, oh, we could do it together because we have similar things. So we prepped for the lab together and we worked on that together. So it was really good to have someone to do that alongside with rather than just doing it by myself. And I think that having her there also um, allowed me to learn more about her project and connect it to mine. 
Originally, my stance was to convince people why we should incorporate CRISPR into society. And as I got more wind of the negative kind of reviews and attitudes internationally, I had to kind of step back and go, well, maybe not why we should have CRISPR, but maybe why we should consider it and the pros and cons that we definitely should weigh. She had done terrific research in the background for CRISPR, and so for me, her ARP12 experience was a little bit less about the research and a little bit less about understanding her field, um, and a little bit more about developing communication skills and presentation skills. I personally really enjoy podcasts, and so I thought what would be something that's accessible to people who aren't necessarily looking for a lesson, but they still want to learn something new, something bite-sized. And I thought maybe a short podcast might be the best way to do that. I think there's a sense of empowerment that I was able to contribute to an academic conversation that people my age probably don't usually get to contribute to. I'm very passionate about sports, but I learned to you know, create a new passion and that is uh, my project now, which is DNA replication and ultimately getting into my project, which is, you know, a new material, synthetic spider silk. So I think it's really cool how, you know, I didn't know anything about this project at first. And, you know, now I have a passion to, you know, keep on learning about it and, you know, keep on understanding how they, they produce this material. Billy and I talk all the time, so we know, like, I know what's going on with his project, and so it was just nice, though, to see him give this presentation to people, and he was just really knowledgeable about it. Like, he really knows about this, um, which was pretty cool to see. That's the beauty of ARP. I mean, you can really go any which way you want with this project, and that's what's so neat about it. My ninth grade self would probably be a little shocked and, I think, amazed with with what I've done um, over the past four years. I've just like learned so much about my topic that it's just interesting to think about that it's only been like a year and a half, but I feel kind of like an expert on it, I guess. I have always been interested in mental health, and I know that a lot of students and teenagers, it's becoming more and more of an issue in today's society. Doctors have begun prescribing meditation instead of medication for a lot of people who struggle with anxiety and depression. So I really wanted to make sure that students knew how to get help at Liggett in um, a way that was more accessible to them, I guess. I think Alyssa's project is really cool and I, I find it especially impressive that she's able to make this mark on the school and have kind of a legacy here and um, I think that it's really impressive that she was actually able to get this space made and I think that it's going to be beneficial to a lot of students. When I finally found a space that I wanted to use for my room, I kind of created a list of all the elements that I wanted to include but I didn't really know how to arrange them or place them in the room specifically. So then I thought of Maddie, um, another student in my class who was working on feng shui and color therapy in her project about um, bedroom design. And I realized that our projects really went hand in hand together and that'd be a really um, interesting like collaboration for us to do. I wanted something that people could look at and touch and things like that. And I had always been interested in interior design. So that's how I got to my topic which is how does the interior design of a teenager's bedroom affect their mood. So working with her this year has been really interesting in how she's creating a meditation room for the school and how the things that I'm implementing in the ideal bedroom for a teenager, how they overlap. And it's been really cool to kind of work with her and see how everything can fall into place when working together. I think that's the really neat part about it is that, you know, sometimes you think you know what you want to do, um, but you know, you could end up at something completely different and absolutely love it, and that's what happened to me. Even in my junior year, uh, that second semester, I had looked at, you know, effects of um, synthetic turf on people's health. Um, I looked at, like, uh, baseball injuries in the elbow, the UCL, and, it, I mean, I never thought that uh, by the end of it, I would be, you know, looking at craft breweries in the city of Detroit. So I was, you know, speaking with some of the teachers at my school, and um, my uh, physics teacher, old physics teacher, Mr. Brunner, actually put me in touch with this couple who were starting up a new brewery called Brewery Faison uh, in downtown Detroit across from the entrance to Belle Isle. Mr. and Mrs. Slaga, the owners of Brewery Faison, were extremely helpful to me, um, whether it be you know, understanding, you know, the impacts a brewery can have on an area or, you know, letting me come see the construction that's going on downtown. 
I came here um, when Alec was in fourth grade, and he was a quiet, you know, young, small, little fourth grade boy, and it's just amazing. I told his mom just the other day how amazing it is to be able to see him and have him have a conversation about the revitalization of Detroit and how he can be a part of it. And that's a perfect example of what Liggett does here. It, it takes yeah, kids that, that um, it, it teaches them that they can change the world if they want. To hear them give each other constructive, positive feedback, that's pure and utter pride and joy, just to watch them do that. This is them. This is all them wanting to showcase everything that they've done and can't wait to do it the next day. It's an opportunity for a person to really chase their dreams and like Nowadays, a lot of kids don't, so it's a unique opportunity, I feel. And that's kind of why I came to Liggett. And to me, you know, if at the end of a school year we can say that the work a student has done, the work a senior has done in the academic research program deeply mattered to them and matters in the greater world, then we've created that something that's fundamentally different. We have changed the nature of school, and that's really exciting.